Hi, I'm the new woodworker, and today we're going to build a bandsaw stand. First, I started with the restoration of the saw. I removed the table screws in order to remove the table. Then after removing the screw for the pointer, I was able to slide the trunnion straight off. After I loosened the adjustment screw, I was able to slide the top guides down, making sure I catch the spring. There wasn't much rust and I was able to just do a quick brush up and blow out the remaining sawdust. There's lots of guides for how to install bandsaw tires, so I won't go into too much detail here. Here I'm just running an adjustment tool, the miter saw, in order to relieve the tension around the tire. Most of the cleaning between the cast iron tabletop and the top guide bar was just done with a wire wheel on an angle grinder. I'm just applying a quick coat of paste wax in order to provide a slick surface and protect the finish. These are simple rabbited frames. For this part of the adjustment, all I did is take a piece of 1x and attach some casters to it, 
and here I'm putting a hinge on, ensuring to make sure that all the hinges are at the same height so that they'll deploy at the same time. In order to start doing the math on some of this, I need to measure the amount of throw that these arms have. I've measured the overall length, and I'm measuring the distance it takes for the wheels to deploy. Now here I'm using a scroll saw to cut these out. If you don't have access to a scroll saw, something like a CNC or a router would work just as well. These lag belts will be held in with some simple construction adhesive, since I don't intend for them to come apart easily. Spade bits aren't the most accurate things, but I don't have access to Forstner bits at this time. And I'm drilling in from each side to ensure there's no blowout. Once they're cut, you can start adding in your side panels. This is the cam that I'm using in order to deploy the wheels. The distance between the two holes is equal to the length of the throw on the two legs. That'll give me a 60 degree throw with the arm on the side. If you want to design this project for different angles of throw, you'll simply have to do the math. 60 degrees will just give us a very simple equilateral triangle.
I glued, clamped, and nailed these throws into place. Out of everything in this setup, this joint will probably be taking the most torque. Enough to make it worth your time to do it. It wasn't growing enough. Like, like how did that? Because you know, I guess we'll, you know, kind of fast forwarding. Like, and you mentioned that it stopped. And I'm just cutting down the shaft so that the handle will fit flush on the side. These are just some rings of foam pipe insulation that I used as spacers to keep the wood from rubbing. Here I aligned the cam so that it would be directly in line with the shaft. Here I'm measuring the distance between holes on the throw and on the cam so that I can create the same spacing on the rods. Here's a neat little trick that I use from building model rockets. If you need to draw a line that runs parallel to the length of a rod, you can use a door jam or even a piece of angle iron. The holes were drilled in such a way so that the pieces on the cam and on the throws would be a loose fit, and on the rods it would be a tight fit since that's the harder of the two woods. As you can see, I was using nails here that were slightly too long. Shouldn't have done that. Got my finger. He also talks about how he's gotten to get over 323,000 subscribers. He gets 800 of his time on his personal work. Before we get into it, we want to thank our new members that joined the MSD page. We tried this week. On the top, it just slid in. 
but on the bottom I had to press it through with a clamp. And it's kind of hard to see in this, but the throw on the left actually has a crack on it, which will come up later. Now this is the first time I actually had this whole stand on the ground to be able to test it. And all I'm doing here is eyeballing where to put the slot so that I can run the belt through the tabletop. These are just some motor mounts that I threw together real quick. I won't go over too, in too much detail how to mount or even wire up this motor. Since I'm using an old treadmill motor here, you might get different mileage depending on the type of uh, motor that you use. I also had to replace the casters that I had originally used. The ones I had had locks on them and they had a larger space for swiveling and actually when they were fully deployed they would interfere and hit the edge of the box. I made this door off camera and I'm just cutting a quick bevel in it so that I don't have any exposed hardware such as handles. Here I'm installing the, the wrong hinges, as you'll notice later they change color. All I did after that was bolt down the saw using washers so that the nuts don't press into the wood, but also ensuring that the pulleys are still in line with each other. This link belt is really handy, but it does stretch out a little bit over time. I think after about a week of use, I could probably go with taking out another link. I 
And then of course for the first test cuts. The motor is a little slow here and the belt is slipping a bit. These are a couple things that I addressed after the video was made.